We have two really exciting speakers um, left on the panel, and I'm glad you guys all stuck around. Um, I heard their next speaker speak at um, our session on Monday for the Forbes 30 Under 30 panel, and he's quite impressive. Um, Jan Rezab is the CEO and co-founder of Social Bakers, and he joins us now to give us tips on what content creators need to know about social videos. Jan? That was not the best clap I ever got. I think that's for the, that, that. <laughs> Thanks, I, th I thought I got that for the older than 38 comment in my Forbes panel at the beginning of the week. Uh, so uh, uh, thanks for a reintroduction. Today I'm gonna talk about social video. And social media, as you all know, is the, one of the fastest moving places in marketing nowadays. Billions of people use uh, social networks. Uh, we see social networks rise with tens of millions of users pretty much every month nowadays. We see networks being built up in six months to one year that have over 100 million active users. And they are extremely powerful. And what I want to talk to you about today is, is video. Video is an extremely brewing format and has been on the internet for a while now. But there is a trend and, and there are some data points that you might want to and need to follow when it comes to social video. First of all, when we, when we look at social video, there's an amazing evolution of formats. Uh, when we look at the original video online, this was mostly YouTube or well, before, you know, after downloadable, YouTube streaming videos. But now, as social networks came to arise, we now have Facebook native videos, Twitter native videos, Instagram 15 second videos, six second Vine loops with artists that have billions of loops and views, millions of followers on their channels. We have different hyperlapses to make content shorter and faster. So we really are in a true evolution of, of, of social video. And recent trend just emerged in the last weeks is Meerkat. Meerkat is a streaming platform where you come into the app, you click, and it's just live streaming on Twitter from that second. So we're, we're in an amazing evolution here. And YouTube has been a go-to video platform for a decade, but one thing has clearly changed in the last year. Facebook is taking dominance in video. And I believe, I strongly believe they will be, and if not are already, the number one video platform on the internet. Now why is that? When we look at Facebook pages and, and the amount of, of embedding of videos, this is the amount of pages that have embedded YouTube videos or Facebook videos over the last year. And as you can see where one year ago people would be publishing YouTube videos on Facebook pages, nowadays they primarily publish native Facebook video. And this is quite a dramatic change. And I'll give you some context to that. I mean, YouTube is still huge, of course. You know, we have brands like GoPro, Red Bull, and countless publishers being on it. And of course, with strong monetization. YouTube is still an amazingly strong platform for its monetization. Facebook doesn't have monetization, but we believe they will fix that soon. But when we look at the individual brands then on Facebook, they are publishing more and more native videos. And native is really the trend. I'm making the examples on Facebook, but it applies to every social network. All the social networks will be taking the videos natively onto their platforms. And this, ha this has many impacts. This has a shift in advertising. You have to advertise on those formats natively. This means complexity grows. If you want to launch a video today on social networks or online, you can't just take a TV ad and launch it. There's an absolute change in the way you should produce content. So, you know, Facebook's taking that thunder, and in terms of engagement, it overtook the thunder where, where YouTube would have been 30, 40%. Now it's just 5% on Facebook. We look at the Super Bowl, we compare the number of videos around 2014 Super Bowl with 2015. YouTube was clearly leading in 2014. Now you clearly see Facebook is the leader. And this is not only in terms of distribution, this is in terms of engagement as well. Engagement is a key uh, form of what you do on social media. So this is something to definitely, definitely watch. And there's a sort of a fresh new look on Facebook. It's not only a social network, it's becoming a media platform with tons of content and different forms of content. And it's evolved, right, from just 
text to photos and now to, now to videos. And there are a couple of things that, of course, caused that. And, and two biggest shifts last year. One was the moment where we all pour, pour ice on our heads with the ice bucket challenge. And the second was the, world, the, the soccer World Cup uh, over, over in Brazil, which caused an amazing amount of videos being published. Video is also the, 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 the format with the highest reach on social media and specifically on Facebook. Now, why is that? Facebook always likes benefiting the early comers. When you come onto a platform early with some content, Facebook would give you better reach. So when photos would still be the highest volume format, they would have 4% and videos almost 9% reach on average per post. And that's a lot more and a lot better. And we're seeing a drive in ad spend where video would be nothing in Q4, it was 5%. I believe Q1, it'll already be 10 to 15% you will advertise video as well on social media sites, native social advertising. Now, we believe there are a number of standards to be done around that, but still, it's a tremendous shift which is happening. And the, there, there's a, a huge change in the way, as I mentioned, you produce, uh, produce video, um, where in a traditional TV ad, an agency would go in and buy an ad slot, have a 30-second slot today, if you're running a pre-roll, for example, on YouTube, or a skippable pre-roll on YouTube, this was an ad from that Geico created. And basically, when, when you have a skippable ad on YouTube, you can skip it in five seconds. The Geico ad was over by four and a half seconds. It says this ad is going to be over even before you can skip it. Geico save what are 15 percent and 50 minutes on car insurance. And that it, that's it. It was over. But the moment you wanted to click that skip button, which is on the bottom right of that screen, a dog came just under the skip button. And you're like, what's that dog doing here? And the whole frame was frozen. And the, 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 the dog, for two and a half minutes, started eating everybody's food. And that's a brilliant use of format. But that, what that means is you won't only have to create a new format of video for, for online. You'll have to create a new video for YouTube, unique video for Facebook, unique video for Vine, and unique video of Instagram. Now, does that, does that all make sense economically? You know, I think agencies and time will yet show. But what we're seeing is agencies being, building amazing creative video format where they think of the campaign and of the social native video before they start building things. And they cut the campaign up, make little frames of it, and then they made the, make the production in one. And that, there's a big change behind how to do it. So dog ate all the food. Many agencies still come to the brands and say, we'll make you a viral video. And we'll support it by an ad. We'll support it by this. Stop thinking about viral videos. There is no viral video when it comes to uh, uh, social media. There's only what we call shareable. Yes, you can create a video that if you pay for a million views, you might get 500,000 extra or 2 million extra when it comes to boosting through shares. But there's no such thing as a viral video anymore. I'll give you an example uh, on Super Bowl and a number of other viral videos. So these are, every one of these charts represents one so-called viral video. What media, what ad age, ad week, anybody would have called a viral video campaign. And these are the daily views from the moment the post was created to the following days. And as you can see, most of these campaigns had a 10-day lifetime. So are those viral videos? They're not. They, you, know, you had very, basically zero effect after the 10 days you had no long-term effect of that so-called viral video. So it didn't go very viral after 10 days. So the only thing in the notion what we're trying to create is that it's shareable video. And they have very little long-term value, which means if you want to do video, you should probably tell a story with more videos at the same time. And I love how Volvo did their Van Damme campaign. They released a big video and then offshoot videos that they segmented the marketing for actual uh, truck potential truck buyers. So you have to build different campaigns for social. Um, you know, one thing about uh, social media is it's the hardest to measure social media channel. And most companies today, they measure social in complete isolation. When we look at um, 
brands, when we look at agencies, I still go to agencies today in New York where they would say, look, uh, I would ask, how do you measure your social, how do you measure your native video? And they said, well, we have some manual folks that go do it and they do some report and they send it over. This is not the best way to do it. Also, most people, you know, when it comes to video, would measure it through views, just views that you have. But the be most beautiful thing about social video and having a video on YouTube and on Facebook and any other channel is that you can measure exact retention second by second of every video. Which means when we built our video analytics platform, for example, we didn't only say, okay, this is the normal view count that you see, by the way, that's a three second, that's a three second view count. When you have viewability standards by IAB and MRC, they say two seconds is a paid view. YouTube and Facebook take the organic view at three seconds. So that's gonna be your, if you have a one million views, that's gonna be one million three second views. But what you should be watching is a three second view, a 10 second view, as well as a 30 second view. There is value if you have a 40 second video that somebody watched for 10 seconds. Definitely more than if they watch, have watched for three seconds only. So monitor and segment that behavior of views. And then what we saw the best companies doing, Lego, for example, ha has tons of campaigns and they do tons of video. What these guys do is they take this retention data off a of video and feed it back to the people that produce those videos. To iterate, this is specifically this second is where you started losing the most amount of audience. This is the place where you should start fixing it. And they create both short form videos and longer form shows of content uh, and, and tons of shows, in fact, on their YouTube channels. And they iterate and create better content based on analytics. But what we are seeing is a lot of companies measuring in a wrong way or measuring in isolation. And what I mean by measuring in isolation, if you're only looking at yourselves, for example, it's not the best, it's not the best thing. Um, so measure, you know, measuring context. When it comes to, if you're Nike or if you're any particular brand, take you, then measure the direct competitors around you. That's the logical thing. But then you have the ecosystem competitors. If, you're, uh, if you are Nestle, you probably wanna measure retailers and what they do in social media. Because social media, there's public data. Every view on YouTube, it's publicly available data. Every Facebook engagement interaction is publicly available data. So you can measure all of that in context. And then of course, understand the deeper and deeper intelligence about that. And then you have newsfeed competition. Generally, you know, a, a, a soccer club, a football club, uh, anybody in the newsfeed, any other page or any other person for that matter, is your competition. And at the end of the day, the number one thing for social media and the goal that marketers are trying to achieve today is not get, uh, you know, uh, is, is of course to get social media ROI, but you only get that through one way. And that is getting content that you have, either it's videos, photos, or status updates into the newsfeed. And you have to, if you're publishing content, most marketers today, they just go and they would publish an update on their Facebook page, but they wouldn't check, okay, is, is the ecosystem noisy now? Should I be posting at this hour? Should I be doing that thing really? And they wouldn't know how to measure and manage in context. So this is something that you have to, you have to do. A bit about social bakers, I, I gave a little bit of background in my panel, I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, we measure over eight million profiles, which means we can provide that context. We're 34 million in funding, 330 employees and 13 offices around the world with over two and a half thousand clients. And we provide anything from basic analytics to kind of correlating with website data, correlating with retail data, and we love those projects, taking in new views and new metrics, such as video. So those are the kind of the key, key things of, of what we do. And um, so three takeaways from, from my presentation when it comes to video. So number one, if you have video content, publish it in a native form. It's key. On uh, Facebook, you publish a Facebook video. On Twitter, publish a Twitter video. On YouTube, of course, a YouTube video, you don't have another option there. Second one is measure in a right way. And, and uh, 
That is, you know, don't only look at uh, three second views, look at the whole context. And number three is always innovate. The Facebook and all the other platforms, they really give a lot of value to people that, that would innovate. And what I mean by innovation is not only build a new format or this, but try experimenting, do new things. Um, if I look at the agency world and if I look at the brand world today, they put loads of money, loads and loads of money into TV and producing TV commercials, et cetera. But what I haven't seen a single company do, social is the best test audience pod you could have all together. So why not put five options of your ads that you're deciding which one to run? Why not run them on social media? In 24 hours, you will have results from 10 different custom audiences that you sent and targeted it to with five different options. And you analyze those 50, 50 data points and you choose which am I running, which is better for my target audience or my specific audience. And the biggest beauty of social is now, and this is why I think Facebook will kind of beat the, 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 the Google ecosystem in some cases, is you have the so-called custom audiences. You can target individual people through emails, through phone numbers, through they, if they downloaded apps or haven't downloaded. And that's available on Facebook, on Twitter, and on, on other social networks uh, you know, sooner or later. But this is something, if you're not using that, you're not doing a very good job. But you can use that for so many things. And we're at the very, very beginning of social media and social media advertising and social networking. So with that, thank you very much. Follow me on Twitter. Meet me afterwards. I'll be in the, in the foyer. And thanks for your attention.